Hi everyone, welcome to our Community Impacts of the Migration Crisis on American Latinx Youth podcast. This is a mini series for our Spring Advocacy Project, and I have a very special guest, um, Jane Doe, who would like to remain anonymous, um, but she has a great story to share, and I'm very excited to have you here, Jane. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I honestly, I just want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear your story on just the migration crisis in general and um, later on how the community has backed you in this um, intense, intense, yeah, situation. So yeah, take it away. Okay, so I'll just kind of start off like where I'm from or where my family's from. So my mom is from Mexico and then my dad is from El Salvador and they both came here when they were younger. So we're the first generation that is just like from America. Um, My mom gained her citizenship through lawyers and they just were able to get it when they were younger. Um, My dad on the other hand was not able to. And I think that's why this migration crisis is so scary right now because people don't realize that it has to do with more than just a person. It's a person that is loved by so many other people. And this one just like hits closer to home. Yeah, definitely. Um, So you're saying your dad's undocumented. How has that influenced just you growing up, your childhood? Just tell me a little bit about that personal experience. I would say more on like somewhat of a surface level, I would say like answer. But for example, a lot of kids are allowed to go on vacations with their family and leave the country and explore new things. Whereas we just kind of can't do that as a family. I can always do that if I want to, but I never get to experience and go on new ventures with my dad because he's just unable to, and it'd be risky for him to even try. Yeah. Uh, there's obviously a lot more things that are just hard growing up, like the constant fear of, oh, are they going to see that he's a little bit more tan than the average human or like the average like white American and like resort to thinking that he's illegal. And then that just has a lot of layers to it in itself. Yeah. And I mean, being from Southern California, like Los Angeles, right, this this issue is even more prevalent here compared to in other states yeah. in the U.S. So so tell me a little bit about how the community has impacted you, maybe where you went to school, how that has influenced you. Have you received support through education? What type of backing has your community been able to give you in this struggle? Yeah. So I live and I have lived my whole life um, more surrounded, I guess, by the Latin community um, and by Hispanic culture, but I did go to school and kind of like develop, I would say, in a more predominantly white community. So in some sense, I couldn't really give exact details of how the Latin community would like support me. But I would say when it comes to people and cultures outside of that, the support isn't very much there. It's just kind of seen as like this horrible illegal thing, which it's illegal essentially, which is like valid. But people don't realize, like I said earlier, that it's beyond just breaking the law. Like it's a human being or people who are human beings and immigrants are human beings. And um, I think people lose sight of that and kind of, I don't know, they don't support it because of laws and people just want to go by law. And I understand and people have valid points to everything, obviously, but there's more behind. Yeah, exactly. There's so much, yeah, there's so much more Mm -hmm. to it. And I think we, we forget or just in general don't really remember that we have to be supporting our fellow American Latinx mm-hmm. youth communities. Yeah, definitely. It's obviously something very scary, but everyone has their reasons for coming yeah. here, right? And so whether that's to escape, I don't know, prejudice, 
come to live the American dream. Everyone has their reasons. And so, yeah, that's a great point. Okay, awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about the steps to gaining citizenship and maybe some difficulties or the overall path to getting your citizenship in America? Yeah, so I think a lot of people who haven't had to go through personal experiences with it oftentimes think, oh, you apply, you either get accepted or denied. And it's that's just not true. There's thousands of dollars, years of a person's life and just so much that is put into it. So I guess a personal example, um, my dad's um, wife, who isn't my mom, so my stepmom, um, her daughter is from El Salvador as well. And she was, I would say, the outline and the model of what you would want as a citizen in the U.S. She went to high school, got straight A's, went to college, graduated, got a job where she was able to learn English and try to transfer over to America when she was planning on coming here. And her citizenship got denied and we had been trying to get her to come over here legally for, I would say, 10 years, close to 10 years. Wow. And like I said, that's thousands of dollars wow. that's being put into that like all the time. Um, it's not just something, it's not like a application for a job. And I think people oftentimes think that it's that simple and it's not. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just kind of heartbreaking that even when somebody tries their hardest and wants to live that American dream and proves that they can be um, useful in a society like the one in the U.S., mm -hmm. they just are denied and they're seen as not being fit or just for whatever reason. It's crazy because no matter how, how hard a person tries, you might not get that chance. Yeah, definitely. That's so unbelievable. You know, like you said, a model citizen, educated, can speak English, yeah. a hard worker, and it's still so difficult. So tell me a little bit about how we can help support Latinx youth as a community. I mean, just being there emotionally for friends that might be going through similar situations. I'm lucky enough that a lot of my friends and the people that I'm surrounded by, when I tell them about my situation, they sympathize with me and understand that this impacts my life a lot greater than the average person might think. And I think being there for people is just the best form of help you can give a person. Emotional support means everything and being there to listen to every problem, even if it's may not be that big of a deal to you, listening just does everything. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate hearing your experience through it and how you think the community can better aid in this crisis just emotionally. And I'm sure you guys can always reach out to institutions in your community that have more knowledge and information about what's happening. So yeah, so thank you again. This was a pleasure. Thank you for listening to my story. <laughs> yeah, and thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate it. I hope this helped you guys just gain a better understanding of what goes on in the lives of American Latinx youth. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.